What's up guys? Uh, welcome back. In today's video, I'm gonna replace the CV axles and drive flanges on my 2400 series Land Cruiser. This video is, uh, is one of a full series that I'm doing on everything that you need to know to completely rebuild and restore um, the drivability of these old Land Cruisers. So check out that playlist. The link will be in the description there and subscribe for future videos. But I will say of all the things I've done so far, um, this has been probably my favorite job. Just kind of a fun job to do and it also made a really big difference in the way that my car drives. Um, before I did it, I had like a lot of play in uh, where the CV axle meets the, uh, the dry flange, like those splines were pretty worn out. So what that meant was there was a lot of uh, you know, like looseness and just chunkiness when you were going through the gears or accelerating, uh, as well as when you put your foot on the gas, there was like a really big driveline clunk, like everything kind of slammed into, into place. And with the new axles in and the new drive flanges, um, it's like smooth as butter, right? When you accelerate, uh, there's no clunk and it channels through the gears really smooth. You can just almost feel the weight and the quality of the axles as soon as you put your foot on the gas pedal. So I'm very satisfied with that. Um, and in the video today, like I said, I'm gonna show you my process. Uh, I will say for jobs like this, uh, you always wanna consult the factory service manual uh, to make sure you don't miss any steps. But uh, here are the steps that, that I took and kind of some uh, interesting findings I encountered along the way. Here's a few parts that you'll need for this job. Um, I have the uh, dry flanges and the numbers, they're the same for either side. I have uh, differential seals, which are different for either side. Uh, I don't plan to replace these. I just wanted to have them on hand in case I damaged mine but it's not the easiest to get these seated into the diff, uh, you know, at the right depth. And, you know, if you get that wrong, you can cause leaks. So mine aren't leaking, I'm just gonna leave them the same, but I have these just in case. Uh, I also went with OEM axles um, for a couple reasons. I did a lot of reading on it and it sounds like just aftermarket axles aren't anywhere near as durable. They might last you a few years, but not much beyond that. And then also I heard that, uh, you know, OEM are the only ones that are really gonna fit right into the diff and into the spline. I mean, I don't know about that, but I did read about other people who bought aftermarket axles and, you know, had trouble with like the diff leaking because of it. Uh, I have a, a, a torque wrench. I have this chisel to remove the dust cap, uh, which I'll show you. Um, pry bars help to get the CV axles in and out of the diff. I have metric sockets up to 24 and uh, my socket wrenches. Um, this T55 Torx bit is gonna get us into the, uh, the refill and empty um, nuts off of the diff so that we can replace the gear oil because when you remove the CV axles, uh, the gear oil actually comes out. Um, so you have to have a splash pan to catch that. I have my bucket. And then I have some uh, two quarts of gear oil to, to fill it back up. Uh, and then the last thing I think you'll need is uh, definitely some jack stands. You're gonna have one wheel off the, the ground and uh, likely gonna be crawling under the car. So make sure you check your wheels and use sufficient jack stands. Two more things you'll probably need for this project. Um, one is this gasket. Uh, you need two of them for the front diff, uh, the fill and unfill uh, bolts. They have these washers on them, but uh, they're only used once. They're like crush washers. And then you'll need a hammer to help get some of the cone washers out of the uh, dry flange. All right, so the first step to all this is to come under the car on the passenger side and check to make sure that your diff refill nut will come off. Um, then we're actually gonna go ahead and drain the diff. I have a bucket set up to catch the gear oil. Um, but you want to make sure you can get this one off first because if it's jammed into place, you don't want to be a situation where you let all your gear roll out and you can't fill it back up. Um, so break that one off, break this one off, and empty the diff. We can inspect the drain plug. Um, there's actually a magnet on the end, so we can take a look to see if we see any you know, big metal shards 
Uh, I see some really minor stuff, so probably not a big deal. All right, uh, once the diff is drained, you can take the dust cap cover off, just uh, using a chisel like this, kind of around the edge. Take the caliper off and get it out of the way. That's two 17 millimeter bolts, uh, one here and one a little bit kind of lower. I would loosen this guy to give the brake line some more place so that you can, I'm gonna kind of hang the caliper out of the way over there. Um, and then we're gonna have to undo this ball joint. So that, the way I would do that is remove the cotter pin, loosen this bolt, but don't take it off. And then you can kind of pound this with a hammer um, at maybe a little bit of a downward angle to disconnect that ball joint. And you have to hit it pretty hard. I'm gonna use a two and a half pound hammer to disconnect that. Um, but that'll allow us to move the spindle around and get us a little bit more room to get the CV axle out. And uh, to give the spindle a little more play, I wanna undo this harness. Uh, there's a bolt here, there's another one there. And if you follow this line up, uh, this is where it comes into the engine bay. You can just disconnect that and undo that guy right there and just feed that wire through then we'll be able to manip manipulate the spindle you know, pretty far away from the ball joint and have some room to, to get the CV axle out. Um, so let me do all that and then I'll uh, pick the phone back up. I got the upper ball joint off and I have the spindle kind of hanging on a zip tie. Um, this one was really hard to get off. You know, I was kind of hammering it and uh, it wasn't coming loose. So what I did was I, uh, I came down to the the lower one and I loosened it up just enough but kept the nut off and hit this one with a hammer this one separated and then I think the weight of the uh, you know the spindle pulling down allowed me to more easily separate this one um, one tip when you're doing that uh, keep the nut on the threads just to protect them so that when you're slamming this thing right here with a hammer uh, you don't end up banging up the threads so this gives us a lot more room to uh, you know, pull the CV axle out. And from what I understand, the easiest way to do it is this end first, the inboard end first. So I'm gonna crawl under the car and show you where the inboard part of the CV axle meets the diff and how we're gonna kind of tap it out with a, with a pry bar and a hammer. All right, um, here's the inside of the CV axle and this is where it meets the diff. So there's a bit of a, a lip here and I'm just gonna use my uh, my pry bar and a hammer to kind of, uh, from this angle, knock it out. Uh, it shouldn't be too difficult, but I'm gonna hit it like here and then over here and uh, just try to get some separation. And then from, from that point, I should be able to take this off and remove the uh, inboard part of the CV axle. All right, there we go. Um, that was not hard. I just took some smacks on either end of it and it popped out and you can see it's leaking a little bit of diff fluid, which is fine, um, but this should make it pretty easy to grab the axle from the other end. All right, um, I got the uh, inboard part out and you can see this is the, uh, uh, the seal, which I hope not to replace. Um, I was able to kind of pull the, uh, the outside end of the CV axle most of the way out of the hub, but I'm kind of, it's kind of rubbing into this area. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the car on and turn the wheel a little bit to the left, which should push the uh, tie rod out, turn the spindle a little bit, and then I should be able to kind of get this out between the uh, sway bar mount and the, the shock there. All right, after that, the, uh, the old axle's out. Here it is. Um, it's really heavy and not easy to, to get out of there, but I'm gonna to have to be really careful when I install the new one, not to tear the boots on, you know, all those little sharp edges and things. But um, yeah, it wasn't too bad. I got it out, so um, let's go ahead and get the new one in there. Here's the new CV axle. Um, the first thing I noticed when I picked it up is that it is much stiffer than my old axles, which are like just kind of flailing all over the place. So um, there's likely some excess play in my old axles and it'll be good to get these in. Uh, I also wanted to show you this guy, which is on the inboard side that goes into the diff. There's a little ring here and that is the locking mechanism. Um, so when we put it back in, we're gonna have to kind of 
in the same way, use our uh, pry bars on this lip um, from the other angle this side and kind of knock uh, this into the CV axle into the diff. Um, so let me go ahead and get this set up. Hopefully I can get it in there just as easy as, as I got the other out. And uh, I'll check in at that point. All right, um, I wanna show you guys something on the inboard part of the CV axle. There's this snap ring here that has a pretty big gap in it. When you put this end into the diff, that gap has to be at the six o'clock position. And then you have to use a pry bar on this lip to kind of push it into the diff and get that snap ring to snap into place. Um, I thought I was having a lot of trouble with that. So I ended up taking the hub off, getting everything lined up perfectly and just, you know, hammering it in or pushing it in and no matter what i did there was like a quarter inch gap between the cv axle and the diff and uh then i realized it's that i had already actually engaged the snap ring it's just that's as far as the cv axle goes into the diff um i wish i would have taken a picture of it beforehand but the way i figured that out was to take this little ring off and put this part of my old cv axle in and, you know, as far as it goes in, there's still that quarter inch clearance. Um, so, you know, I had taken everything apart. I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and record this one going into the diff so you can see what it looks like. But just get everything lined up. Um, and again, you don't have to take the hub off. I, I actually had it right when the hub was on. I just didn't realize it was right. Um, but the key is whether the hub is on or not to line everything up and to kind of support this boot a little bit with some uh you know some upward pressure here as you slide it in and you can kind of wriggle it back and forth until you feel the gears catch and when the gears catch you'll get another you know quarter inch of insertion and then at that point you're not going to be able to do anything by hand you have to reach those pry bars into the back and tap it in from there but really if you get the gear seated and you get that little quarter inch of insertion then you know you're in the right place the snap ring's about to be engaged just some light taps of the hammer should uh should get everything seated correctly All right, there you go. And that's what it should look like when it's uh, when it's fully cedar. I would say that's a, about a quarter inch gap or uh, maybe a little more, but that's it. All right, I got the, uh, the axle back in and the hub back on. Um, one quick tip is that when you are uh, putting the CV axle in, you don't wanna rest it right here because there's a really fragile uh, dust cover, like that silver flange right there on the right will get bent inward. Um, it's best, I think, that it keeps its shape. So like put something soft right here if you're gonna rest the CV axle on the bottom of the control arm. Um, and then when you get everything back together, uh, the torque specs here are 81 foot pounds. This guy is 90 foot pounds. Make sure you put your cotter pins in and tighten further if you need to, to get the cotter pin through. The one on the bottom is uh, 117 foot-pounds. And then for the brake calipers, uh, 91 and 91. Um, I started the car and turned the wheel, and when I did, I pressed the brake. So the brake caliper compressed a little bit, and now it's too narrow to get it on my rotors. So if that happens, you can just remove this brake pad, you know, get some channel locks like this, and uh, compress that uh, each of these two calipers back inwards. Um, and that should give you enough space to get it back on the rotor. All right, um, I had to do this job in two parts because I ran out of time last night, but I have the new axles in and now I want to remove the drive flanges. Uh, to do that, we just need to loosen these 14 millimeter bolts up uh, all the way around. And there's a washer and then there's a cone washer as well. You can barely see it in the drive flange there. 
and its job is to kind of center the dry flange on the wheel or the six of them cumulatively do that job. To get those out, we have to strike these bolts with a hammer, um, but you need to be really careful not to damage the threads or not to like, you know, if you use a steel hammer, you'll end up bending these and the bolts won't go back on. So you can use a brass drift to kind of punch it like that. Um, it's good to keep these nuts on. So I like to keep them like that so that I know I'm not striking the nut, which would maybe bend the threads. But if you keep them on, it'll keep the cone washer from shooting across the room and, and getting lost. Um, so that's a trick. I think just kind of consistent persistence all the way around. You, you probably will get stuck for a few minutes on one or two, but eventually they'll come out. If they don't, another trick you can use is to use a socket that's big enough to go over the bolt and over the cone washer and sit flush on the dry flange. And if you hammer the end of that, you know, it'll send vibrations all around that cone washer and eventually it'll, it should pop out. Um, and uh, obviously penetrating oil helps a lot if you uh, use that ahead of time. So this is what it looks like when they uh, they start to come out. Look like that. All right, uh, so here's what it looks like with the drive flange off. Uh, you can see the kind of inner workings of the wheel bearing inside of the hub there. I'm gonna replace the wheel bearings another time. Um, but for now, I will have to get this. There's a thin gasket between the hub and the drive flange that I'll have to take out and replace. Uh, I will include the part number for that in the description as well. But after I get that done, I can just take this new drive flange, slide it on, and torque each one of these bolts down to 26 foot-pounds. Oh, and don't forget to put your snap ring and dust cap back on. The last step is to fill the diff back up with gear oil. So I have this uh, $10 pump I got on Amazon for quart size bottles. And then I've also uh, cleaned up the drain and the fill plugs and uh, I have new crush washers for those. Um, I put the, uh, I put the drain plug in already. Uh, both of these torque down to 36 foot pounds. So, you're supposed to fill the uh, the diff up with gear oil all the way until it starts leaking out of here. And then you can put the fill plug back in, torque it down, and we're all done.